So we're making head towards the better understanding of the uh, human eye, how it's made. And we already discussed that we have these two photoreceptors in a photosensitive tissue called the retina. And we already started discussing the differences between them. And it's about time we went in and we dove into the mechanism, the mechanism of vision, how these guys essentially can take photons and turn them into some sort of signal. And I'm, I can tell you right away, this is a, a somewhat of a, a, sometimes you can say complicated mechanism because it's, it works differently from what we're, we're, uh, we're used to from the action potential idea. But uh, the way I like to, to uh, do it is just talk about something really ridiculous. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's just say I have, I have a house. I have a house and this house uh, has a party in it. And the host, the host called Rodopsin, Rodopsin, this is a this is a nice guy. He likes to let people in all the time. And the doors, the doors are always open and people can actually get in. All the doors are open. How the hell are they? There we go. Doors are open. And basically Rodopsin can be bothered to keep those doors open all the time. So he has door stops. He has door stops that he just keeps 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 around and then the doors are open. When the doors are open and there's a party, we all know that people are getting in, nice, happy, positive people. Positive people are getting into the party. They're getting into the party. Maybe there's a door here, maybe there's another door here, but just positive people keep flowing in, in and out. And they're just free to, free to go into the house. So the house, you can say, is kind of a happy, positive house because there's a party going on. There's people coming in and out. It's all good. But this guy, Redobson, as you may have, may have imagined, has some sort of some sort of interesting kink to it. It does not like light. It doesn't like light. And the thing is, when, when the sun comes up, this is, this is not the sun, the sun should be in yellow. There we go. When the sun comes up and there's light rays coming in and Rodopsin is being hit by one, he turns into a, you can say, he gets excited, excited, and not in a good way. He's like, oh, what's going on? And essentially, he is turned into, uh, maybe he turns into a prick. Transducing turns into this guy doesn't like the sunlight doesn't like what's going on and he's like you know what guys uh, get out he's he's taking off these these door stops he's taking off these door stops he doesn't like people coming in and out anymore he's taking off these door steps so essentially the door is closed they can't remain open anymore and people can't come in anymore people can't come in and out anymore so the house is kind of losing you can say it's losing its positive charge in a way or it's losing its positivity and the house is, is not positive anymore and the house is slightly more negative. And this is basically how, <laughs> if, you, if you'd imagine, if you have some, a good imagination, this is basically how the phototransduction actually works. This is basically how the phototransduction actually works. So what is going to happen? Let's just see if we can figure it out. And actually, this is the, I'm just going to switch colors here. I don't mean to make it complicated. This is not a very complicated image. But this is, this is the rhodopsin molecule. And you can see that it's embedded in the bilayer. So it's an integral protein. It's embedded in the bilayer. And it's, you can say that it's here. It's all around here. When you see this, when you see this little, little depiction, really what they mean is that the membrane kind of falls in on itself, kind of falls in on itself. And this, and it has a, a, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of rhodopsins in it somewhere. So you can, so you can imagine. So what goes on? Let's just uh, imagine. That we'll take the uh, the story that I just told. Rhodopsin has has some sort of party, and people come in and out. And by people, I mean positive charges. So positive charges always come in and out of this house. This is the house. So positive charges always come in and out. They're happy, so they're keeping this inside positive. So we can say that this cell is always, it's positive, it's happy, or it's more positive. And then, and then what happens? Then this, uh, then this rhodopsin is being hit by a photon and it gets excited. And by excited, what I mean is that it goes through some sort of conformational change, or you can say isomerization. It goes from this, this point of having a cis bond to a point of having trans, trans uh, configuration. So we can take this, uh, this double bond configuration and turn it into a double bond configuration that is a, a trans configuration. 
if you think, oh, this is a lot of chemistry, don't worry about it. Really don't. You just need to remember that it goes from a cis conformation to an all trans conformation. This is really what you need to know. So it gets, this guy gets excited. You got a, you got a photon, that photon interacted with it, got excited. And how I like to think about it is, well, maybe, maybe this thing turns, kind of gets straightened out, kind of get lifted up. Maybe it, maybe it's like uh, other things that may get straightened out when they get excited. So this is, this is the way I think about it. And when this goes through an all, uh, all trans retinol, there's an activation of a molecule called transducin. Very good. And this transducin really, what he does, he goes around, goes around inside the cell, goes around inside the cell, and he takes, he takes a molecule called CGMP. CGMP is basically the doorstop. Why is it the doorstop? Well, you can think of it this way. We have ion channels. We already know that we have certain types of ion channels that are called, they're called secondary messenger ion channels, which means that they have a little, a little room here for molecules to bind, just a little room here. And this is where the CGMP binds. And if the CGMP is bound to all of these ion channels, they're open and ions are going in, ions are going in. So you can imagine that if transducin in some way decreased the concentration of CGMP, then CGMP wouldn't be able to bind with these ion channels. So these ion channels are going to be closed. They're going to be closed. So you can say that when CGMP is decreased and you don't have CGMP here, these ion channels are closed up. And when the ion channels close, we know that we're not going to have an influx, an influx of ions. And if you're wondering what ions are involved, well, it's mainly sodium, uh, maybe a little bit of calcium, but I don't imagine that you really need to know that. You really need to know that. But basically, you can say the sodium is coming in. And then transducin here, transducin here is activated in some way because uh, there was some excitement going on. And I'm going to go through this again, step by step. Took away all these CGMPs. Now they can't bind to these ion channels. And these ion channels close. And now all these ions can't get in. And if positive charges can't get in, we are getting hyperpolarized. We are getting hyperpolarized. So in effect, it's the very opposite way than what we, we were led to believe. Because usually we were at a negative state, and then we went up to a positive state. And here, what, what I say is that, oh, wait, we're at a positive state. And then when light comes in, we're going to a negative state. And this is, in a sense, what is going on here. And I know it doesn't make a whole lot of sense maybe right away. But basically, the hyperpolarization is the, the signal that is going to be relayed to our nervous system. This is the signal. So when the, uh, when the party is on and when everything's positive, when everything's positive, there's no signal going on. Oh, I really need to find a color. There you go. When everything's positive and these sodiums, these people get in and out, there's no signal. It's, it's kind of in the dark. It's at night. But when the light comes up and sunshine hits, then these positive charges, these positive charges are not going to be able to get in because CGMP decreases. They're not going to be able to get in. The ion channels are going to close. And then this whole thing is going to be a little bit more negative. And at that point, at that point, the party is over and there's signal going through. So I'm going to go and go ahead and try to do this again and, and make, make somewhat of a summary. Make somewhat of a summary. So this is a summary of the party. Summary. So let's see what we have going on. First of all, we have darkness. If we have darkness, darkness, we have lots of CGMP that opens channels. It opens, opens channels. Let's just say sodium channels, just because it's an ion that we already know. The channels are open, and the cell is somewhat depolarized. It's depolarized. Perfect. And then what happens? We have light. We have light coming in. We have light coming in, so the, the protein or the series of complexes of rhodopsin, rhodopsin in the membrane gets excited, excited. And this means that the cis-11 retinol is turned into all trans bonds, all trans retinol. Retinol. Very good. And at that point, transducing, transducing is activated. Transducin is activated. And transducin, what transducin does is transducin lowers, 
lowers the concentration of CGMP by hydrolyzing it, but don't worry about it. It lowers the concentration of CGMP, and the concentration of CGMP is lowered, then the channels, the channels, the ion channels close. When ion channels close, there's no influx, influx of, of positive charges or positive ions. So the cell gets hyper, hyperpolarized. It's hyperpolarized, and there's signal, signal transduction. I know this may not be very super intuitive. I know this may not be very super intuitive, but I did try to make it as, as easy as possible. What the important things that you need to understand is in order for signal to be transducted, you need, first of all, to have a depolarized, depolarized uh, uh, photoreceptor that turns into a hyperpolarized, hyperpolarized photoreceptor. And this is basically the opposite way that we're used to, but this is how signal is transducted via the photoreceptor. So this is the take-home message, I would say. And if you're wondering, why is there hyperpolarization? There's hyperpolarization because ion channels close. Ion channels, channels close. And that means that in, uh, in, in dark situations, the ion channels are open all the time. Lots of CGMP channels are open. Positive charges are moving in, and we have depolarization. And then through, through some excitability, these channels get closed. And when these channels get closed, we don't have any positive ions moving in. And then when we don't have any positive charges moving in, we have hyperpolarization. And this is really our signal. And this may take, if you look at it, maybe it may take a while for you to really understand it. But if you break it to the bare essentials, I would say this is the most important thing here. This is the most important thing. I really hope that I was able to kind of, uh, kind of order the, little, the messes that we have around this idea, because there's some confusion sometimes. So hopefully I was able to help with that. And I think I'll do another video just answering questions, and uh, maybe we can tackle it in that sense. So see you in the question answering video about the human eye and the vision mechanism.